Yeah, this is the spring of my life. That's Isha, I-S-S-A. It's a haiku poet after Basho. And we're not reading an introduction. We're reading a poem. It's like a narrow road to the deep north, but it's in that tradition, and he has artwork with it. Mm -hmm. hmm. Long ago in Fuko Temple in Tango Province, there was a devout priest who made up his mind to celebrate New Year's Day to the fullest. So he wrote a letter on New Year's Eve gave it to his novice for instructions to deliver it to him first thing the following morning and sent him off to spend the night in the main hall. With first light and the first crow cause, the novice rose in the long shadows and went to knock at the priest's door. He heard the priest's voice from within, asking who was calling. The messenger, he replied, sent from Amida, Buddha of the Pure Land, bearing seasonal greetings. The door was thrust open, and the still barefoot priest motioned his novice to take the seat of honor. He grabbed the letter and opened it quickly, reading aloud. Give up the world of suffering. Come to the pure land. I will meet you along the way with a host of bodhisattvas. Tears rolled down the old priest's cheek until they soaked his sleeve. His story may, at a glance, seem terribly strange. After all, who would want to celebrate New Year's Day in sleeves soaked with tears that were self-induced? Nevertheless, the priest's way was righteous. His principal duty was to bring the Buddha's teaching to this world. What way to celebrate New Year's Day? Still clothed in the dust of this suffering world, I celebrate the first day in my own way, and yet I am like the priest, for I, too, shun trite, popular, seasonal congratulations, commonplace crane and tortoise echo like empty words, like the actors who come begging on New Year's Eve with empty wishes for prosperity. Customary New Year pine will not stand beside my door. I won't even sweep my dusty house, living as I do in a teeny hermitage. Constantly threatening to collapse under harsh north winds, I leave it all to the Buddha, as in the ancient story. The way ahead may be dangerous, steep as snowy trails, winding through high mountains. Nevertheless, I welcome the New Year just as I am. Home. New Year, greeting time. I feel about average, welcoming my spring. You want the poem read again? Mm -hmm. Poem, New Year, greeting time. I feel about average, welcoming my spring. This is Isha, I-S-S-A. She's a haiku poet from Japan who came after Basho. And we're reading from the spring of my life. Although she was born only last May, I gave my little daughter a bowl of soup and a whole rice cake for New Year's breakfast day. Poem. Laughing, crawling, you're exploring already too years old this morning. New Year's Day, 1819. Laughing, crawling, you're exploring. Already two years old this morning. No servant to draw Wakamizu, New Year's first water, home. But look, deputy, Crow arrives to enjoy the first New Year's bath. Springtime beside a lake. Home. Under such a calm spring moon, even the tortoise crows this season. Why does the tortoise crow? <laughs> and then we've got some drawing of some bird with the crow. See the crow? He, he's an artist. <laughs> wow, that means he's a 
Buddhist and an artist and a poet. And springtime beside lake under such a calm spring moon, even the tortoise crows this season. Hmm. Home as if from the gods, spring moonlight illuminates the hillside flower feet. As if from the gods, spring moonlight illuminates the hillside flower feet. Entering Zenko Temple on a festival day. Home. A gray pussy willow sold as a Buddha flower proud among colors. This old cherry tree was loved famously when it was ah uh, so young. <coughs> Full cherry blossoms, his old hip tentative under tucked up kimono. A gray pussy willow sold as a Buddha flower proud among colors. This old cherry tree was loved famously when it was ah uh, so young. Full cherry blossoms, his old hip tentative under tucked up kimono. Written to celebrate Inari, the mythical trickster fox, on his festival day, poem. From among the flowers, indifferent to the world, foxes bark and cry. Second day, second month, Learning moxa with the cat quietly at home. She always got moxa stuff. Mm -hmm. They like moxa. Mm -hmm. Emerging brightly, beautifully from the bushes, a new butterfly. From among the flowers, indifferent to the world, foxes bark and cry. Second day, second month. Learning moxa with the cat quietly at home. Merging brightly, beautifully from the bushes, a new butterfly. Uno hill in the distance, a home above the bather. Those broad walls remain at ease, light and misty air. All the garden, this poor house can afford one plot of budding green rice. In cherry blossom shadows, no one really is a stranger now. Among the bather, those broad walls remain at ease, white and misty air. All the garden, this poor house can afford one plot of budding green rice. In cherry blossom shadows, no one really is a stranger now. This one's written on Buddha's death day, which is March 15. It's March 15, 18, 19. Home, aloof and silent like the Buddha. I lie still, still troubled by fire. Even as he sleeps, Buddha smilingly accepts flowers and money. Bowl of clay, the kitten climbs up on the scale to weigh itself. Buddha's death day, March 15. Aloof, poem, aloof and silent like the Buddha. I lie still, still troubled by flowers. Even as he sleeps, Buddha smilingly accepts flowers and money. Bowl of clay, the kitten climbs up on the scale to weigh itself. Along the Tama River, home, dyers, white cloths, strips, walk from the breeze, brightening the white mist of spring. Dyers, white cloth, strips, walk from the breeze, brightening the white mist of spring. A reading from The Spring of My Life, uh, haiku poetry of Ishe, ISSA, translated Sam Hamlin. 
number two, chapter three. On a beautiful spring morning, a young monk in training named Takamaru, still a child at 11, left Osian Temple with a big monk named Kanyo. They pick, plan to pick herbs and flowers and Arazaka, but the boy slipped on an old bridge and plunged into the icy roaring river, which was swollen with snow melt and runoff from Izuna Mountain. Hearing the boy's screams for help, Kanyo dashed down the bank, but there was nothing he could do. Takamaru's head bobbed up and disappeared. A hand rose above the raging water. But soon his cries grew as faint as the huge buzz of mosquitoes, and the young monk vanished in the river. Nothing left but his image engraved forever on Conroe's eyes. On into the evening, torches blazed along the bank as people searched for Takamaru. Finally, he was found, his body wedged between boulders, too late for anyone to help. When someone found a handful of young butterburrs in the dead boy's pocket, probably a gift from his parents, even those who saw them weep, began to soak their sleeves. They lifted their bo his body onto the bamboo palanquin and carried him home. It was late evening when his parents ran out to see his body, their bitter tears <coughs> observed by everyone. <coughs> True as followers of the way they had always preached transcendence of this life's misery, but who can act otherwise? Their all too human hearts were shattered by undying love for their child. When the boy had left it down, he had been alive and laughing. The young monk lay still and cold in the evening. Two days later, joining the funeral procession at his cremation, I wrote this tanka poem. Not once did I think. I throw these fresh spring blossoms into the dense smoke and stand back to watch it rise and vanish into the sky. Poem, not once did I think I throw these fresh spring blossoms into the dense smoke and stand back to watch it rise and vanish into the sky. As much as Takamaru's parents' flowers too must weep to know they may be hacked down and burned on any day just as they open their faces to warm spring sun after months of winter snow, don't flowers have a life? Wouldn't they as much as we realize nirvana in the end? During meditation, poem. He glares back at me with an ugly, surly face, this old pond frog. A bright moon lights the plum blossoms. Am I also tempted to steal them? High over the dark shadows of pine islands, a skylark breaks into song, teasing the big cat, wags its long tail, playing with a small butterfly. Written in Hoshina Village on the Spring Kanan Festival Day. Remember, Basho went to Hoshina. Well, maybe not Hoshina. I don't know where. But anyways, poem, Wind-strewn blossoms. Buddha gathers secret coins in a shady nook. The gentle willow, pliant as a woman, tempts me into the garden. Belly full of rice cake to digest. I go out and graft another tree. End of chapter two of The Spring of My Life of Isha, Isa by Sam Ham. Hmm. He's a haiku poet. Some of those poems were 1819.